I'm Caroline Marshall and welcome to Bump to Business Owner, the podcast speaking to mums in business, you. I'll be in conversation with some of the most inspiring women and mothers in enterprise about their journey, how they created their successful businesses alongside raising their children and what that looks like in work and family life. And welcome back to Bump to Business Owner. I am genuinely excited to be back here today because I think we needed a long break of the podcast and I'm going to talk about that in this episode. And that is the theme of today's episode. So I've come back with a very special solo episode to talk about burnout. I think it's a bit of a trendy word right now. So I've been resisting using that word, but I felt actually it was um, something I see on LinkedIn all the time, something I've had an extreme version of, which is why I want to talk about it, but also why this podcast relates to burnout. So we took a bit of a longer break. We all needed it. It's, this is a team ever of me and some fabulous ladies on the Upsource team, Steph, Mary and Rachel. And I think by the summer we all needed a break. Even though I'm really proud of some of the episodes, especially the last one we released and all the women I spoke to. Getting on a podcast with women is genuinely amazing. But I think what everyone doesn't know until you have a podcast is just how much work they are. And you don't want to put out something that isn't very good. So it takes a lot of work behind the scenes. So I love this, but it's not my main job. And so we've been testing, we've been learning as we go. And I think that's what actually puts people off starting podcasts and things, because you have to put stuff out openly and test and learn as you go. And um, we'll talk about a bit more of that in a minute. But when I came out and when I started this, I wanted to make it clear I wasn't just doing this to... Uh, you know have something else to do vanity matrix I wanted it to be clear I'm doing this because I'm really passionate about this subject I feel we can really build a community here and talk about everything we talk about on the podcast and really relate to some of the guests and have founders talk about not just their founder story but also the like how the f they're making it work I can't believe I just censored myself there how on earth they're making it work with motherhood and I really felt I needed just to continue this podcast but when I first started to bring it out I felt right I've got to go and guns are blazing go in weekly and it got a good response and so with that what got a better response was the guest episodes and mixed with when we looked at um I was taking so long with my solo episodes that they needed so much editing I was like we might as well do like guest episodes every week let's crack it out the vanity metrics got to me like anything actually I think I'm getting better at this but a real toxic trait of mine is when I start something I feel like I've got something to prove and I really go all in and it it means that yeah I can be quite successful at some things but also like it's you know I don't recognize when it's too much for me I think I'm getting better at that I don't feel like I've got anything to prove right now I've done a lot of work on that but I I think I was just like no I need to show people this is a podcast that we're here today I'm going to put the work in because a podcast isn't successful overnight apparently yeah it takes like three years at least that's if it's ever going to be successful but that quickly led to quite an intense regime we had we basically I think we had a few weeks break in April on the podcast but 2024 was like weekly guest episodes and I did bulk record them as much as I could but I also knew I could three was my absolute limit in one day and I didn't want to record them too far in advance I literally got off being a guest of a podcast the other day which I think the topic it will still very much be relevant in January but people do this and I think sometimes we learned with some of the podcasts last year, things can happen quite quickly. And I still want the episodes to release to be fairly current if we're talking about a particular subject in the fundraising world or in the founder world. So it meant I couldn't bulk record that far in advance and I was still working four days a week and I run a business with Upsource and despite what everyone might say online, when you run a business, you've got to, it's quite busy. So um, I, yeah, I think I started to kind of see the signs towards June, July that I was getting quite tired and creating briefs for my podcast guests, which I do for every guest um, because I, doing it the other way, not every podcast does this. I've been a guest on many, which I've really enjoyed, but my favorite podcasts have been where they just give me a little bit of prep and I don't actually prep in return, but I know that they've done the work and what the sort of angle they're trying to get from me as a guest. So, and while none of that may work on the actual podcast, they're doing their best to create a structure. So I feel like their podcasts have always been a lot better. 
Whereas, and sometimes when you create a brief and someone comes online, I think maybe Shivy from the Positive Birth Company is an example of that. I had no idea what she was going to come on the podcast and talk about and what happened to her during her maternity leave. So it kind of, the script all went out the window, but that was fine. And I think that's a great example. But other ones where you don't get briefs, it's a bit like you end up just ranting on a podcast and then the guest, the host is ranting as well. And I, I'm just not a fan. So just to add this in, a lot of prep work goes and a lot of work behind the team and we're really trooping on top of our content and socials, which is a lot of work also having to show up as any business owner will tell you when you suddenly become a content creator. Yeah, by June, July, I remember one of my team going, oh yeah, you must be ready. And I was like, oh gosh, do I sound ready? Is this coming across on the podcast? I This isn't good. I went to the podcast show earlier this year and it was really good, but I met this agency, like a podcast agency, I was like, PR agency. And I was like, oh, dream, can not afford PR. But then they talked to me that they can do reviews of your podcast. And I thought, actually, that is a really genius idea. I think as much as this is a team effort and we all have input and um, feedback, to each other on things. I just thought, wow, this is great to get, to just see, we've been around a year and a half now as a podcast, like, are we on the right track? Apparently they've even told people, you know, if their title of their podcast isn't right. And there's a lot of things we've changed. So I am currently recording from Riverside, our new recording studio, because they said, don't do Zoom. So any tips there for anyone else thinking to launch a podcast, don't do it on Zoom like we've been doing for the last year and a half. And we also changed the icon. I actually didn't want to have an orange icon because I thought it was a bit loud for mothers overstimulating, but they said we should try the orange it will stand out more so really interesting small details like that but what I took from it that was key well I took loads of things from this report and I've left them an excellent testimonial but what I took from it was there were like weekly guest episodes is a lot and this will lead to burnout consider bi-weekly and that was like a sentence I was like hmm I need to sit on this and sometimes I've learned now about taking a sign about burnout and pushing yourself and listening. If someone who doesn't know me, doesn't know that everything other than they've obviously listened to the podcast, so they might know enough, has said this could lead to burnout. And I was like, okay, I need to sit on this. And so then I proposed it to the team. I was like, I think we need to go bi-weekly. And everyone was very much on board, which is a sign we are all probably getting a little burnout. It's interesting though, because um, so the first time I think I have knowingly ever experienced burnout was back in 2018. I was six months pregnant. I'd been working full on in a startup. I would have been very isolated from my friendship group because I was pregnant and didn't want to be around 30ths and drinking all the time. And so I'd got quite isolated and then I ended up hugely overworking because there was so much work to do and I was just at home all the time doing all this work. And it got to the point I got really sick, just like a cold while pregnant is rubbish. Really sick and um, I was waking up every day and I couldn't call in sick because they needed me. They didn't have the capacity to cover my clients and I knew that and I couldn't put it on my work colleague. And I was waking up every day and my husband was like, you need to call in sick. And I was like, I can't, I can't call in sick. There's no nothing, like this other girl's sick, I can't be sick. And he was like, yeah, but you're pregnant and you're sick. Uh, you, you have to, and I wasn't calling in sick. And uh, basically I was like, well, we were going to Cornwall um, to visit my parents and for my birthday. Um, and I was like, look, I just need to get through this and then we'll have a, ho have a break, I'll have a holiday. I arrived in Cornwall and I woke up crying every day. And I was like, something is not okay here. And I was like, normally when I go to Cornwall, I you know, switch off from work at that point, no kids, I was pregnant, but I was waking up crying every single day. And I realized that I wasn't okay. And there was a lot going on there. It wasn't just to do with work, but I was definitely burnt out to the point where we saw a doctor as soon as I got home, made my husband come with me because I was like, this is awful. I, I can't believe I'm in a doctor's surgery about my mental health, about this. And basically she, I don't know, so some angel sent from above, but she was like, basically, I'm gonna write you off work for a minimum of, you've got to work part-time for the next two weeks. And if you don't agree to this, because she was like, saw my face when she said she was going to write me off work. And she said, if you don't agree with this, I'm going to have to have another conversation with you because you have to agree to this minimum, I think part time for two weeks. So I th it felt like a lot at the time. This doesn't feel like a lot now. That feels like it was a lot to be convinced I had to work part time for two weeks. And it worked out. And I ended up doing like really good things. Like I went to, um, 
frame and did a bar class. I think I went to the theatre with a friend. I went for a massage for me. I felt my baby move for the first time and it was wonderful. And I think because that stage of my life was so bad that I feel like the buzzword of burnout makes me feel like, oh, it's quite trendy to say burnout. And when you're actually just a bit tired and just need to look after yourself. And I don't think I was burnt out, but I think I the signs were starting to show with the podcast earlier this year that I was starting to feel a bit like it was a chore a bit resentful, dare I say it. Um, not, and this was never when I was on the podcast doing it with a guest. I'd always learn so much, I'd see the benefits, i see the value for the podcast, but also myself selfishly. But I was like, I can tell that's where we were heading towards. So I just wanted to talk about this because I feel like as business owners, we can all recognize these signs where we're starting to feel a bit resentful of what we're doing, not getting any joy from it. And feeling like, I did in 2018, that we can't take a holiday or take a break. And that was the perfect thing because the podcast isn't revenue generating at the moment and it's focused on mums. So we're all on school holidays in the summer. So it's either if people have more time to listen to podcasts, they can catch up on it and it's less time than not there. So I just, we were always going to take a summer break. But it just gave me permission of like, wait, you know, we decide this, let's take a longer break let's review the podcast we've i've paid for this really helpful review let's take our time decide how we're going to do this and i think this is why it's so important to talk about this because you can do this in your business as well i understand your business could be your main income for the family and it can feel hard but i just feel this was an important conversation to have with founders and this is the reason and now seeing it again because while it was a lot of external factors the first time i had burnout out of my control but also me wanting to be a perfectionist, push for my career. And I think it's remembering that in your business of how much of it is essential and how much is it you pushing yourself to do it. And I think that was a perfect example with the podcast. And maybe if you feel like you might be seeing those signs, getting external help, like literally it was a couple of hundred pounds for this review and I didn't even chat to her. She just listened to the podcast and reviewed it. Um, to say that and for me to listen. And also I did note um, when lovely Mary had said, you you must be relieved. And I was like, oh, um, that we're breaking for the summer. So the podcast is back and we're going to be bi-weekly, me having these little chats about things like burnout and then we've decided to also in line with some of the feedback we got i love this i should have like a whole um season theme on feedback but this <laughs> season we are going to be having an underlying theme of joy because i think when you're burnt out you forget everything that brings you joy um and that's the extreme burnout and that's my experience in 2018 um i didn't get to that stage this year but in 2018 i literally forgot about everything that brought me joy and for me personally i, I talk about it all the time it might be going to the theater spending time with girlfriends getting away from all the boys in my house I love them. Um, making sure I have proper quality time with the kids as well as just all the school runnings. But getting myself to my weekly bar class and uh, workout classes, I've been so committed to them and it's really paid off. And also doing my breath work every day. So I'm still maintaining all those habits. So I want to find out and see what other founders are doing to bring them joy and how are they using that to help prevent burnout. And I think this is gonna be a fantastic theme because I think we can all relate, especially as this season will be in the lead up to Christmas and it gets very busy for us business owners and mothers. Everyone's coming into September, like this is your last quarter, make it, make it, what's it saying? This is your last quarter, make it count. I'm like, I'm just like trying to settle back into a school routine over here and, and figure this out. So what I'd like to know is what brings you joy. I am such a fan of how, as mothers, we need to look after ourselves in order to serve others and we can easily forget what brings us joy. So I want you, this is your homework. Go away, have a think about it. Because I tell you what, finding bar classes again and finding dance made me realize for too many years, I quit something that didn't bring me joy. Um, what could you bring back into your life that brings you joy? What could you start that brings you joy? What is just, for you, reading, crochet. Oh, I've got someone on the team who crochets. That's something that would definitely not bring me joy, but I really respect the joy of crochet. 
knitting, dance, singing, tell us what brings you joy or tell me if you'd forgotten all about your joy and this has inspired you to maybe start thinking about it. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Please do like, follow us, leave a review. It's so important. Business owners, leave each other reviews and then we can grow. But um, please, thank you so much. I am so excited for this next season and we've got some amazing guests coming. Thank you so much for listening to Bump to Business Owner. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Please do rate, review, follow or subscribe wherever you're listening. It really helps us to connect with more mums and business owners. You can DM me on at Bump to Business Owner on Instagram and I'll be back next week.